So great. So we're now so starting the lecture. So welcome back, everyone. Um, so, so so today we're talking about so um, so, so we're we're continuing on the section on so linear regression, right? So we introduced that last Wednesday, and today we're going to talk about when you have so so. so so when you have multiple explanatory um, so, so variables, instead of just one explanatory variable, generalize this to higher dimensions. So this kind of with the linear algebra tools we have, this is going to be straightforward. And then we're going to show how to extend that to a um, polynomial regression, where instead of fitting a linear function, we're going to fit a polynomial function. And we'll see also that this is also a very straightforward extension once you kind of see a simple trick and you um, again apply the same sort of linear algebra. Um, so let's quickly go to the schedule. Um, so um, so, um, so, so, uh, so where are we today? We are, um, we finished all the probability review the, um, and, and the probability focus sections in linear algebra and we're starting in the linear algebra. Um, and so, so we're gonna kind of do a couple more lectures on this. The um, quiz, the, the grades for quiz two should have been posted um, so this weekend. And there were a couple tweaks that, that came out just this morning. The, the grades were on this quiz were closer to where I was, I was um, so, so hoping for the standard grades for the class will be. So that's great. Um, so if you have questions on that, kind of please send email to me and, and, so, and so, so also Hassan. Um, but, but the grades for that, for, 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 for that should be posted. And then on Wednesday, so we're going to have homework to do. Um, so so there's, there are office hours this morning for Hassan and then tomorrow for Peter, and I'm available after class. Um, so so please, please focus on that. I think the first question is probably the one you have to think the most on. Other ones, hopefully more procedural. Again, you're encouraged to use Python for the linear algebra part just to get you practice using it. You should be able to do it without Python. Um, it, you could do it without Python. It'll certainly be easier with Python. Just do, uh, do and if you want to do it in collab, that's great. T take a print out the screen and include that in the, in the PDF you do. Just make sure that the answers are clear where you're answering each one. You can add some like annotation in there and so that should work pretty well. Um, so great, so, so in the lecture today, we're gonna to again talk about multiple regression and then um, and polynomial regression. And for both of these, we're gonna do an example in, in so collab. Again, I suggest you follow along in class. It'll make um, doing, doing, the, <laughs> doing the homework easier. Um, so great. Um, so any questions on the, on the schedule or stuff like that? Okay, Canvas show quiz three is due this upcoming Saturday instead of Monday, assuming that is an error. That sounds like an error. It should, it sh should be on Monday. I probably put in the wrong date. Um, I, um, so, so I will fix that after class. Great, thanks. Yes, the quiz is not gonna be on Saturday. It's gonna, it's gonna be on Monday. Great, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, so I, I assume that's October 12th. Assume I have, yeah, that seems, I must have put in October 10th all those tens floating around. So, so okay, great. Um, yeah, so let's go back to the lecture. Okay, great. So, um, we're gonna be talking about, so multiple, so linear regression. And the, the idea here is to, is, is that, that we want to make, um, yeah, yeah, so we're gonna have the input, input, so data, right? So start with where the input data is. And again, I write this as capital X and lowercase y. And this is going to be a set 
Um, so x1, so y1, x2, y2, up to xn, yn, okay? Where each of the xi's are now going to be in rd, right? So each of the each of the um, the explanatory variables is now going to be d dimensions instead of just a scalar value, okay? And and each of the yi's are still going to be just just a scalar value, okay? There there are versions of regression where you try and predict multiple scalar values at once. We aren't going to these don't come up you know, nearly as often. We're not gonna cover those in this class. Okay, so each of the yi's is gonna be just a scalar value we're gonna predict, but we're gonna try and use a um, d, d kind of, d sort of um, d, dependent values to do so instead of just one, right? So, so an, example, um, an example would be x2 would be, three, two, five, six, and y2, the corresponding value would be minus three, right? So, so this would be an example where we're now, this would be in R4, okay? So, so, so this is just an example here, okay. So, so now we're gonna try and use the values, three, two, five, six, and these could be, now we're, we're keeping track of different sort of um, properties of, of so something. So I'll go through a longer example later where we're trying to monitor customers on some website by keeping track of like their, their interactions with, with the website. And three, two, five, and six, or we'll, we'll see other values correspond with some sort of statistics we've kept track of their, their interactions on the website. Um, and then um, minus three might be the amount of money they spent on the website. Um, in this case, minus money may have been that they, 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 they end up getting a refund for something. So they actually gave money back. So it could be positive or negative, sure. Um, so, so, okay, so we want to kind of use multiple characteristics to try and predict so, um, so, so some sort of value, right? Um, so, and so we still, still want to have a um, linear model, okay? We're going to still try with a model which is, is linear, okay? So it's still going to represent something kind of like a line, it's, it's going to be a function, a linear function, but, um, but, but it's, it's, um, but we still want to be a linear function. I'll write down the form of this just in a second. So, so just to double check, we're only working with approximately a real value function, rd to r. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, there, there are versions of this where it could be some, where it's a binary. If it's a binary function, right, there's a class in the y value, that's going to be classification. You know, you could have something like, like a complex value or something like that, um, or the, the inputs might be complex. Sure, you could have some weird things like this, or you could have a kind of um, categorical variables as the dependent variables, um, as, as the dependent coordinates where it's like, does someone smoke or does they not smoke? If you have medical records, you end up getting a mix of these real and, and categorical variables. There are a bunch of specialized techniques for these, and but the simple way and the most common way, and I'm not going to get into a long discussion of when to use all of these and when not to use all of these, um, but is just to use, treat them as, as real values. Um, so there, there are ways to encode it as this problem. Um, and, and usually that works pretty well. Sometimes you need to go beyond that, but, but we're not going to kind of go into that in, in, in this semester. Great. So, okay. So in order to think about this sort of linear model, we have to think about x i in r d. So we, so we need to write this x i now with these 
multiple subscripts. Okay, um, so we can have xi1, xi2, up to xid. Okay, and so I'll probably refer to the subscript of which of the d coordinates as j and and the number of usually which data point as i okay this is the common thing to do but this is a little confusing i try not to use two subscripts because it gets kind of messy but this is one case where i actually need to write write both of these down okay um and so so then in order to write this sort of this sort of linear model what we want to do is we want to predict a value for y, right? So our predicted one, our estimated one has this hat on it, okay? And we're gonna write this, we're gonna use some model, which we're gonna try and build a model of a fixed form, and it's gonna depend on some variables which I'll call alpha, okay? And it'll take in xi, which is now this vector, okay? And so, so this, as a linear function, it has to have a, um, a kind of a special form, okay? And the special form is going to be A's, um, alpha zero plus, um, so, so it, should, it should look like um, x i one alpha one plus x i two alpha two, plus x i d up to alpha d, right? So it's linear in that I'm taking all of the, um, the values I have, all these dependent values, x i 1 up to x i d, and I'm multiplying just by a single scalar coefficient, or I have this, 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 this additive term, okay? Um, so, so I can write this in a few other ways. I can write this as alpha 0, plus, you know, more specifically J, um, I wrote it I as I was saying J. Okay, J equals one up to D of X I J times alpha J, right? Um, so, so this is equivalent or what's, what's gonna be cool is, is that that, that I can write this as a dot product, okay? We're gonna write that alpha is equal to alpha zero, alpha one, alpha two, up to alpha D. So this is kind of in R D plus one. It goes up to D, but it starts counting at zero, okay? Um, so that's gonna be a, a dot product now between alpha, and this vector one, um, x i one, x i two, up to x i d. Or I can write this as just alpha dot product of one comma x i. Okay, so so now I've got this element right here, which is is going to be a vector in R D plus one. Okay, and so I can take a dot product with alpha because alpha is also in, in so D plus one here. So, so okay, so, so if I have a linear model over a bunch of coefficients, right, so sorry, over a bunch of variables, a bunch of dependent variables, it has, it's ref, it, it refers to having this specific form where I'm gonna have, right? So, so I'm gonna have all of these, if I have my, my dependent variables here, so these are my dependent variables, then they need to show up in the sum, and they, they can only be multiplied by scalars, okay? And these scalars don't, don't have to be the same, and they can also have this sort of offset, okay? So, 
before, if you remember before, we had this kind of offset, which was B, and we had a single scalar, which was A, right? So we had um, AX plus B was this line. Okay, but now we have this generalized form. We're gonna have a bunch of these A's, like A1 up to AD. Um, so to, to kind of, kind of make clear that, that these are kind of the, the model, I'm gonna use the Greek letter alpha. Okay, and these are gonna be alpha one up to alpha D. And instead of using B as the offset, I'm gonna use alpha zero, right? So, so, so now we have, um, I can still use the same indexes one through D, and I can, but I have a D plus one dimensional vector. The zeroth coordinate will, um, or the, the, the zeroth term will, will always be this, um, <laughs> be this offset. Okay, and, and kind of a very kind of, I think, clever, and it's, it's going to kind of simplify our life a lot more as we, as we keep going in this, in that I can turn this, when I turn this into this, um, into this, this model as a single dot product, right, I want to kind of um, turn this into a single dot product wh where I have one vector on the right side, and I have this this um, kind of this other vector here, you know, on on the left part. I have this d to, d plus one dimensional vector, which is controlling, which is capturing everything about my linear model, a bunch of these coefficients. I can just raise a single dot product. I don't have to worry about this offset in a way which is separate. Right before when we solve this, when we only had one dependent variable, we need we did something special with the offset. Okay, but but now I've handled that by putting this this magical kind of um, this magical one right in here in the first coordinate, and so implicitly there's like a one right here, right? But but for every the, this is true for every data point that. For each of for each of the other coefficients, that changes with the data points, but this is constant with the data points. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so can we see example what the model M would would look like? Right. Okay. So, so great. So, so, so this and, and so, um, so, um, so, um, so, so. <laughs> So yeah, it's a good question because I want to make sure this is clear. This exactly is the model. Okay, so, so this model is exactly this. Okay, so this is defining this model. Right, okay, so the model, I'm saying it's a linear model, which means it has to have this form. It can, I can only multiply all of my dependent variables by, by scalar coefficients, and I can add an offset. If it's a linear model, that's all I can do. So I'm restricting the class of models. We'll look at more complicated models later on in this lecture, right? Um, and you can, you, can, you can build much more complicated models than this. Um, but then the model is parameterized by this, this alpha, which you know also has this, this offset here, okay? So, um, Right, so, so, so the model is described exactly by these coefficients, alpha zero, alpha one, alpha two, up to alpha d. I, in order to describe this complex model, which is on these multiple dependent variables, I just need to record this single, single vector right here. If I have this vector, then that tells me what the model is. So I'll go through, I'll go through, um, I, I wanna introduce how we measure error and show you that it's basically the same as before. And then I'll go through a slightly longer example. And then at the end of the lecture, we'll go and do everything inside, inside Python and you'll, and you'll see it in action. So, um, so, okay. So, but this model, when I say a linear model, it has to have this specific form and all I need to describe it are these coefficients, and it turns out the model is just gonna be a dot product. 
Okay, the dot product is the, is, the, is the whole model here. And if you have a linear model, it's just going to be a dot product, okay, which is, is, is great. Um, so, so, okay, so, so, so if we have this, this, um, this data XY, and we have this model M alpha, right, which is described by alpha in, in R D plus one, and X is a, um, let's say is a subset of R D and Y is in, is in R. Okay, then the, um, so then the, we can measure again the error, right? So, so how accurate is this model? Using again the sum of squared errors, X and Y versus some um, model M alpha. And th this is gonna be the same as before, I'm going to have n of these of these data points, right? And each of them is going to have a residual, and I'm just going to square this this residual. This is the residual, and just as a reminder, you know, so so this is equivalent to i equals one to n of y i minus the model of x i squared, right? So, so we're going to measure the error in the, in the same way, where for every of the data points, now the only difference is it's a d-dimensional vector instead of a, a one-dimensional scalar. And I'm going to put it in the model. It's going to predict some value. This is going to give me y i hat. And I'm just going to measure y i minus y i hat squared. I'm going to add all these up, right? When I squared, it becomes um, has to be positive. Um, the, the the difference, although the residual itself does not need to be positive, you can have a sign to it. Um, and then um, so I, and I'm just taking these and squared. And so my proxy goal for what is a good model or what do I want to minimize? We're going to use the sum of the squared errors in the same way as before. We're only measuring the difference in this y coordinate. Right now, we're in this multi dimensional space, but we're still measuring exactly just in this y coordinate here. And because we're doing this, this will allow it to have a simple solution, even in this, even in this space. And, and, um, and, and also, the, um, it's going to generalize to these polynomial models we'll see in, a, you know, in 20 minutes or so. So, okay, great. So, um, so we're gonna have the same, so, so, so sum of squared errors. Okay, and now how do we, now I wanna show you how do we solve for this? Okay, so how do we solve for the sum of the squared errors? And it's gonna be kind of, we're gonna turn this into a linear algebra problem, and then we're gonna solve it with, with linear algebra. So, okay, so, the first step is X is going to be a matrix in R n times D. I'm going to have n data points in D dimensions each. And I'm going to turn this into X tilde, which is going to be in R of n times D plus one. Okay, into a D plus one dimensional, um, where the, I'm going to have D plus one um, columns instead of D. Okay, so if, if we have a simple example here with um, with X equals, let's say, 2, 4, 3, 1, 7, 6, I'm going to turn this into this matrix X tilde, which is going to be, you know, this is going to be in um, two times three into a matrix, which is gonna be in two times four. Okay, and I'm, first I'm just gonna copy down this, this matrix, and we're gonna add a, a row or a column in front, which is all ones. 
Okay, so in general, x tilde is, is going to be this all, so one, so, so this is gonna be this bold one. So this is gonna be column of all ones. And this is gonna be x1, x2, um, up to xd. And these are, this is kind of, it's hard to see this on the, uh, on the slides, but in general, xj with an uppercase x is going to be x um, x one j x two j up to x n j. It's going to be the jth column, starting counting from one. Okay, so so this is the jth so column. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep all the columns from x, but I'm gonna first having an all ones column. So this is the um, all ones so column. Okay, so, so just as I've done here in this example, I've added a column which is, is all ones here. Front, and, and so this will take place, th th this will pretend, now I can pretend that I don't have to solve for the offset, but in order to do that, I'm gonna pretend that, that every dependent variable has a one as the first or the zeroth coefficient. Right, and then the offset is just the, um, or, or as, as the one or zeroth value, and then the, the offset just becomes that, the coefficient corresponding with that one. Okay, this is the same trick I did on the, on the previous slide. Okay, um, but now my data, my dependent, my dependent variables, including worrying about the offset, has all been encoded in, inside this matrix. Okay, and, and then I can have the, the solution. Um, so, so, so then the optimal sum of squared error, so um, so solution alpha star is, I, I can just write this as x tilde transpose x tilde inverse x tilde transpose y. Okay, so this right here is the, is, is kind of, I can apply these linear algebra, algebra operations and output will be the, the solution, the coefficients. This is going to be a d plus one dimensional vector, alpha star. Right, and these are gonna be the optimal coefficients for minimizing the sum of the squared errors with respect to this input dependent variables, d-dimensional d-dependent variables x, and the, um, and the explanatory variable I'm given to train on, so y. Okay, so, so this will be the one that minimizes the sum of the squared errors. Okay, so, so you know, if once I've done this transformation into this kind of linear algebra problem, then I can solve for this exactly. Let's see, so, so I might say, yeah, so I'll go, I'll go through an example next. I might say a few words about why this is, is the right solution. And then depending on time, I might go in more depth at the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the lecture. There's a more detailed account for it in, so, so in the book, it involves some um, kind of some notions that if your linear algebra and calculus is rusty, might be a little bit bit more kind of challenging to follow in the lecture. So I'm going to kind of so I'm so I'm going to kind of defer this. But so I want you to 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 recall that when we when we had d, let me not use blue here. Uh, so so that 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 when we had d equals one right when when we had d equals one then the solution for the slope was equal to something like this normalized version of x dot product with this weird version of y divided by x squared right Th this was the solution 
we had in, in this case, or this was for A, which was kind of a replacement of the slope, and then we solve for the offset in a way which is different. Okay, so we think by adding this column of all ones, we're kind of a s pretending that we don't need to worry about the offset anymore. Okay, by, sh by adding this coefficient. So we're now just worrying about the slope. We have multiple things going on, so we're using more complex linear algebra, and we have matrices instead of these vectors here. Okay, but if I look at this, um, this top part, which was x dot product with y, well, that's kind of going on here, right? Remember, if x was, x is a, x tilde is a, is a matrix, but if x tilde was an n-dimensional vector instead, then if I take the, you know, that you, when you write this notation, you assume it's a column vector and transpose it's a row, and this is like the equivalent of, of of like a dot product. Okay, so if, if x was just a column vector here, then x transpose y times y is the equivalent to the dot product. And then we're doing then then we're doing this dividing through over here. Doing the inverse, multiplying by an inverse is like dividing by this quantity here. Right? So then this quantity x squared, while I'm multiplying x by itself, you can always multiply x transpose by x, or x tilde transpose by x. That ensures the coordinates always align. So I'm, this is how I know I can multiply by itself, and I'm basically dividing through by it. Okay, so I'm, it's basically, you can think of it as a generalization of the solution we had before. Okay? Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so and, and I, I might say a bit more about this. To show that this is the right solution, you can write down the, all the equations at once, take the right partial derivative, show that these are all equal to zero, and then you do some algebra and you end up, end up with this formula. So that's kind of the short answer of why it's true, and I might go through that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so there's a question. X hat is the M alpha the linear model. Um, let me insert a slide. So, okay, so there's a question. I'm trying to understand what this means. So x, x hat. So x hat would be this is, I think this is a, is a question, is the m alpha the linear model. So the, this is the question which which I don't I don't understand. Okay, so x x so what happened? The the input here, so the um input to the linear model to so make a so prediction. is can, kind of one row xi, right? What, which is gonna be a vector in Rd. So I'm gonna have x, which is our n, n by d, right? I can think of this as a, as a matrix. And I'm gonna take one row, this is going to be xi. Okay, so I'm gonna have a linear model. I'm gonna put xi in here. And the output of this is going to be y hat, y i hat, okay? So the, the linear model is, is written by, and remember, this is going to be alpha 0 plus alpha 1 plus alpha 2, um, alpha d, right? So, so this is what the model kind of, kind of looks like. Okay, so, so this is the model, and it's gonna have these holes in here, okay? And in these holes, I'm going to plug, um, remember, 
xi is xi1, xi2, up to xid. Okay, I'm going to plug in here xi1, plug in here xi2, plug in here xid, right? So, so, so that is is this guy right here. I'm going to de decompose it into these d parts, right? It's going to have these d parts to it, and each of those parts go in, but the model The, the model is basically alpha, right? The model is parameterized by alpha. That's fixed. So for each row, right, each row I'm going to plug in, and the model is going to take a dot product. You know, I'm going to take a dot product with this, and the output is going to be yi hat. Okay, so, so the, the model is... Um, the model is this pink part here, is this is this dot product, and so and then we plug each one and we make a prediction, right? So we can make a prediction and we see if that matches up with the values that we're actually given. So how do we know which row is the best for the linear model? Okay, the rows are not the linear models. The alpha, the coefficients are the model, just like the in a one-dimensional case, the line, the a and the b were the model, the xi is the data. Right, so for each of those data points, I can evaluate the model at the data point, but that is not the model itself. The alphas are actually the models, okay? So I can, I train it so that it's given the xi's and the yi's, I can, I, I have as little error as possible. Just like I found that best fitting line, now we're gonna find a best fitting linear surface in d plus one dimensions, okay? I think maybe this will be clear if I go through the example on the next slide. So maybe let me try doing this. And if it's still not clear, then, then, then we, should, we should definitely address these questions. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, so let's, so I, I want to go through this kind of example. And this is about as small of an example as actually makes sense to kind of try and look at here. Okay. And so this example is that there's going to be this like website that's tracking customers. Okay, so uh, um, website is tracking. So so, so these uh, these customers. Okay, and it's going to have n equal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven customers. Okay, and so for each customer, it's going to track three quantities. Okay, so, so this would be, this would be customer one, or three. This would be customer um, number three. That is, so, so each row is, so each row, uh, Okay, so each row is going to be a customer. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm going to track these rows as customers. Okay, and so, and so now this, this, the first three coordinates is going to be equal to um, x3 here. Okay, so I've tracked three things. I've tracked, um, we're, we're tracking um, so three dependent, um, or sorry, explanatory variables. Um, so variables. Okay. So, so, um, one is, is going to correspond to the time, um, the time um, on, on the site. This is going to be in measured in, in seconds. Number two is going to be the, so the jiggle. <laughs> so this is, if you're moving your mouse around on the site, they can measure the total kind of distance that the mouse travels. I'm just going to call this the jiggle of the mouse. 
So if your mouse is still, you might actually have the window open and be doing something else. You might, but if you're moving the mouse around a lot, this is a sign you're more interacting with the, with the website. So, so this is in this is something like centimeters. Okay, and then the scroll. So again, in centimeters here. Okay, and so th this is kind of how far down the website you're scrolling. The more you scroll down the website, that's another good interaction. Okay, and so the thought is that we're probably, as these increase, you're interacting with, with the website more, you're probably going to spend, spend more money. And so then there's also going to be, right, so, so these are going to be, let me write this in, in blue so I can color code it. This is X3. There's also going to be um, um, okay, so I'm also going to track, also track one explanatory variable. Sorry, yeah, uh, sorry, dependent variable. Uh, okay, and th this is the sales in so cents. Okay, so. 2,201 cent is $22 and one cent, right? So, so that's this, this kind of, this right here is the um, dependent variable. I'd like to predict this, okay? So, so this is gonna be equal to my vector y, and this is a vector in Rn, okay? And over here is going to be a matrix This is going to be my matrix equal to X. Okay, this is going to be, and X is going to be in um, N by D, which is equal to 11 by 3. Okay. Okay, so, so this is my input. And what I'd like to do is as customers come on the website, I'd like to track them this predict the amount of sales proportional to the amount of time they spend on the website, to the amount of mouse movement, the jiggle that they have on the website, and then the amount of scrolling that they have. Okay, so I'd like to build a model that predicts the sales, right, how much they're gonna spend versus how much they've interacted. If I look at, for instance, this customer here, okay, they spent very little time, they didn't jiggle at all, and they scrolled very little on the website, and they didn't buy anything, right? So I think the smaller they interact with it, the less they, they spend, where the more they interact, probably the more they spend. And this is hypothesis, just kind of glancing at the data, but I'd like to find the best model, given this data, that, that is, <laughs> is predicting the sales. And I want to measure the sum of the squared errors for all the reasons we talked about in the, in the last lecture. Okay, and so um, so I want to turn this into the um, so um, kind of turn this into the this linear algebra problem here. Okay, so now I've gotten uh, hold on. Okay, so so I so I want to see if I can. Oh, well, that's, okay. Okay, so let's, um, okay, let's try and fit it on this slide. I drew a bit more than I was planning to. Okay, so, so I want to turn this into this linear algebra problem here, and I, and I want to solve for this. Okay, so, so we're assuming that the columns of X are independent. I can see how jiggle might not be independent scroll, so I'm wondering if this is the case. Yeah, so we're not explicitly assuming that they're going to be independent. The, the, the dependence between these, be, between these columns can cause some challenges if you're trying to infer too much from the model we're building, okay? But if you're just trying to use the model to predict how accurate things are, it doesn't matter if they're not independent or not. In fact, they're probably not independent from each other, right? It's probably hard to spend, uh, you know, independent time on the site to the amount you scrolling. The more you scroll, probably the more time you spend. Those are going to be dependent. Um, how good the model is, 
and how we measure, they evaluate that, which we'll talk about on, on kind of more fine grain on Wednesday, um, is, is not gonna care whether these are independent. If I wanna make some judgment about which column, which variable is the most important, in order to say something about that, I probably need to assume independence, which we almost never have. We almost never have independence um, here. So we're just gonna kind of, kind of do the best we can without that, which will limit some of the conclusions we can draw. And basically in this class, I'm just gonna warn you not to make those conclusions. Um, because there are some ways that people have come up with to try and retrofit these conclusions you'd like to make, assuming you had independence, but that typically is not the case. So, I, and I think they're kind of, um, uh, you, you should be very cautious in doing that. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so IAD will come on Wednesday. We'll talk about that. We'll assume the, col the rows are independent, not the columns. That's what we'll end up assuming. Um, so, um, so okay. So, so I want to try and draw this other important matrix here, and uh, yeah, let's do this. And so we're going to get this this matrix, which is going to come out here. Okay, and we're going to add a column of all ones in front here. Okay, and so this matrix here. This guy is going to be X tilde, this pink, this uh, light blue matrix, this so, so this cyan matrix, where I've added the column of ones in front. Okay, so now I can say that if a customer already comes to my site, I might expect some default amount of money they're probably going to spend because they already made it to the site. That's already a good sign, right? So there's, there's some offset. That I can, and now I can factor that in. Okay, and then I can solve for the optimal model here. Okay, alpha star, which is my optimal model, is going to be um, x tilde transpose x inverse x transpose y, right? Where, if, if remember, um, so y is, is, is this guy, and that's right here. And the, right, and each of these guys, each of these X tildes, yeah, these should have tildes, each of the X tildes are this light blue guy, which includes this all ones column. Okay, and I solve for that. Okay, and, and if I actually solve for that, the, the output of this is going to be something like alpha zero is going to be equal to, um, oh, that's pretty good, 26, um, 26. So I basically, once, once, I, once I get them on my site, I'm going to, on expectation, earn basically $26 is, is basically maybe the interpretation of this. Um, so alpha one is going to be equal to 0 0.4. Two. So let's say just looking at this coefficient, um, that as the amount of time increases by a second, every second I make about 40, expectation make about 42 cents. Alpha two, okay, is 12.72 or, yeah, so, 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 um, so the, this is saying for every centimeter they jiggle their mouse, I expect to make about twelve dollars, so that seems like a good, a good deal. Um, but alpha three equals to minus six fifty, and this I'll point out has a minus sign here. That's not a that's not a a mistake I've written there. Um, so the more they scroll, though, I tend to make less money. For every centimeter they scroll, they tend to lose six dollars. Okay. Okay, so I kind of said that these are kind of how they, <laughs> you know, how they interact. So, so this is, you know, um, you know, so they come on the site. This is the, the time on 
right? So I'm multiplying these, these on here. These, these bottom three. This is a, um, so jiggle the mouse in, in centimeters and they scroll in centimeters. So as they're doing that, as they're interacting, I can change the, with the prediction of how much they're gonna spend, right? So it could be as, as they're scrolling down the site, they're kind of not finding what they're wanting, where they're jiggling, they're trying to click on something to actually buy something, right? So th that, that, that's possible, that's what's going on. Okay, I, I made up these numbers, so this doesn't actually come from real data, but you know how websites monitor this is it's not too terribly different than this. They might be tracking other things, but this is just an example. Okay, okay, so the, the, having to do with this independence point here, I can't actually, I shouldn't actually say that if I can get them to jiggle their mouse more by saying having the buttons kind of one of those horrible, you know, interactions with uh, where it moves away from the mouse as you're trying to click it, they'll have to jiggle it more. They're not going to spend more money. They're going to get frustrated and leave. This is, is, um, is, is, is not actually what's, what's going on. I shouldn't treat these as how they would operate inside of a vacuum. If I didn't track time or scroll, I should not predict that the jiggle necessarily has the same sort of effect. It might be lower because it might be counteracting as they, they tend to scroll also some default amount. Okay, so this is a jointly built model. I built this model with this matrix inverse and this kind of matrix multiplication and there's a lot of joint interaction going on here and I shouldn't look at these individually. I can only do that if I assume the columns are independent. Okay, if they're not independent, then I, I can't look at these coefficients individually, but intuitive, intuitively, that's what they're saying, right? They're kind of a, a linear coefficient of how much this is, you know, the, my profit is increasing as they increase in these quantities. Okay, so, so the model is what comes out. I get these four values that are coming out. That's the model. So then when a new customer comes, I can make a prediction of how much they will spend. Or I could have said, okay, if I didn't know how much one of these customers had spent, I could go back and predict what I thought they would have spent. And that's my YI hat, right? But the XIs are the recorded values. Those are the, um, the explanatory variables that I'm, I'm taking in that are trying to explain what's going on in the system. That's the data that I use to explain things. So, okay. So does this, uh, does this make more sense? I, I, I know a number of you have confusion. If you have confusion, kind of now's the time to, to ask. I can go a bit more. We're gonna do a Python example in about um, 15 or 20 minutes. Where we're gonna, it'll, it'll be the same example, but you'll just see it again. So, okay, great. So, so I'm gonna, um, yeah, I'm gonna, great. Okay, so, so I want to move on to polynomial regression. Okay. Um, okay, and so, and so this can apply for, um, this can apply for my input data x, y, where x is going to be in R of n times d and y is going to be in R n. Okay, but here I'm going to pretend I just have a scalar values for x again. Okay, so I'm just going to use a scalar x. Um, it's going to simplify the presentation. And then I'll, I'll mention how you can ex extend it. Um, and we have a Slack day in Monday next week, and, and maybe I can go over kind of some of these ex extensions there. Um, so we're going to assume, um, yes, assume d equals one just in the course of this lecture, just to simplify things. Okay. Um, okay, so, so now I want to have a model that's gonna be more, more, more interesting. Okay, so, so I'm gonna start with a polynomial of degree two. So poly D 
degree um, two or a quadratic so 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 model okay and so i'm going to write this out as y hat and again it's going to depend on some alpha parameters these could just be in a, the first case was just an offset and a slope it's going to be different and i'm going to have some say some two to tell me the the degree of the polynomial okay and so this when i have a quadratic model and the input here is going to be x so each um so okay so so in this case this lowercase um m alpha 2 is going to be from real numbers to scalars to, to real values here okay so this is just a scalar value as the input and in this case, the model alpha is going to be alpha 0 plus alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Okay, so when I have a degree 2, I'm going to have go from 0 up to 2. That is, is, is the model here. Let me write this as red so it's clear. Okay, so, so that's the model. And the, the input is going to have x one this is or x zero um sorry x uh written these pluses in a weird way okay um okay so i'm going to have the first coefficient of of x or just yeah so this is just x plus x squared Okay, so now when I say a quadratic model, what I'm doing is I'm allowing the, um, the, 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 the power I'm considering on the explanatory variable to go up to that power p. In this case, it's a quadratic model is going up to a power two. Okay, so in, in general, we're gonna have a y hat m alpha of a power p of a, a scalar x is going to be equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 plus alpha p, which is going to be x up to x to the power p. Okay, and I can, I can write this as um, alpha zero plus the sum um, j equals one up to p of x up to the power j alpha j. Okay. So I'm still going to have just coefficients. The model is still going to be these scalar coefficients. Uh, of, a kind of a, an, a vector of them. But when I change the polynomial of the model, what that allows me to do is to take the, um, the explanatory variables and raise those to a power. Okay, so, so this is, um, so when you have a polynomial model, that's the extra structure that you get. Okay, and so a trick similar than before, I can write this as, again, this, dot product with alpha where I have this vector 1 x x squared up to x to the power p where now alpha alpha is is going to be in an element of r to the p plus 1 and similarly, I'm going to have this vector 1 x, x squared up to xp, which is also going to be in our p plus 1. Okay, so it turns out I can still write it as a dot product, but I, the, the trick is that I'm taking this vector x and I'm kind of ex, expanding it out into all of its kind of 
um, all of its powers up to a power p. Okay, and this this guy turns out is equivalent as if I don't do the offset and I just start j equals equal to zero up to p, and then I have the alpha j x to the j because if I raise something to the zeroth power, it's always a one, right? So the zeroth power is always a one, and and so I get back the same model as well. So I can always write this as this as as this dot product in this clever <laughs> this clever form. Okay, um, okay, and then if if I want to measure the air, I can still measure the so the residuals of for for x i y i as r i equals y i hat minus y i equals this this model alpha to some power x i minus y i right so so these are still the residuals and the sum of the squared errors right for this x y to some power p is still going to be this same as before, by the end data points, the sum of these residuals squared, which is still m of alpha to the power p of xi minus yi squared. Okay, so, so I can still do this sum of squared errors. And what's really kind of great about this form is that if I expand this out, right, this is equal to i equals one to n of this expanded out this dot product alpha um, one x x squared up to x to the p. So it still kind of looks like a dot product with my with my model minus y i. And I square these and I sum these all up. This is the same form as before. Um, I've just turned the trick here is I've turned x in, in R1 into this x tilde, um, which is equal to equals 1 x x squared x, um, x to the power p, which is now in R to the p plus one. And now it looks exactly like I had this um, multiple explanatory variables before. Okay, so I, um, it now it looks like exactly like you have multiple explanatory variables, even though you start with only one. And then it looks like a linear model on top of those because I'm just multiplying the coefficients with the dot product the same way as before. So it has the same solution. Okay, so th the solution is, is going to be exactly the same. So I can create this matrix xp tilde, right, which is going to be one, all ones on the first column, x1, x2, up to xn, x1 squared, x2 squared, up to xn squared, up to x. Um, 1 to the p, x2 to the p, up to xn to the p, right? And, and I have the y matrix as before, and then the alpha star the, the, for the pth power is then going to be just xp tilde transpose, xp tilde inverse, xp tilde transpose y. Right? It's the exact same solution as before. Once I've done this expansion and I've blown up this matrix, I started, I started my initial data. This this is my initial input, right? In addition to y, right? I I also have this y is the initial input. Okay, but starting with these two things, I've blown up this one vector x 
into this p plus one dimensional vector, and then I can apply the same trick I did before. Okay, so so let's look at a kind of this look at this small. Actually, let me first go through um, a very small example. So x, let's say x is going to be um, two, four, three. So this is in R n, which is three in this case. And then y is going to be one, six, five. Okay. And so I'm going to blow x p tilde up into this vector. And we'll do this for p equals to five, right? Just so it's, it's clear. The first column is going to be all ones. The second column, I just copy down the original data. And then the next column, I square this. And then the third, um, that's the third column. The fourth column, I take it to the third power. So eight, I'm already at 64, 27 to the fourth power, 16, 256, 81, then 32, 10, 24, 243. Okay, so I've blown this up and then I can try and fit some, some sort of model. Right, so if, if I want to take a model on, right, this model is going to sit on top of here, eight, alpha zero, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, alpha five, right? So, I'm, so for any input row, right, for, for any input kind of value of X here, um, right, any input value X, I first, the first thing I do is I expand it out into this row, and then I take the dot product with the model. The model is this kind of these, these parameters, which I'll, I'll learn in some way with this special equation, right? And, and then I take the dot product, and this kind of the dot product between these two things will, will give me y um, hat. Right, <laughs> this this prediction. Right. Okay. So this is this is the simple example of the expansion. Let's let's look at some data. I'll, I'll kind of talk through this example quickly, and then we'll jump into Python and redo these examples in Python. Okay. So. What I'm doing here is I'm starting with the same example I had before, where I did with the, with the simple linear model with, with one parameter, right? Um, okay, what, where I have just one parameter, this is, this is X. And now I'm adding more data. So, so I'm adding data onto here. So th this is also so I'm stacking these together, and I'm having each of these is one of the one of these the the x values of these data points I've drawn this in this chart here, right? So this gives me these x values, and then I'm also going to get these these y values here, and I'm just I've added on this second chart just so I have a bit more data. Okay, so I'm going to think of stacking these together. Um, doesn't fizz well, but I have I have all these data points. And if I run linear regression as I did before, I'm going to get this red line through here. Right? So I can get this red line. So right, get this red line through here. Okay, but you probably see, well, there there might be a better fit, something that looks like this. Maybe that's going to be a slightly better fit. There's some other pattern going on here. With a little bit more data, I might be willing to say there's a more complex pattern going on here. And something that goes through there, like this, might be a, um, a polynomial. The, this might be a P degree, so 
polynomial. And that means it will have exactly the form that, that we've been, been writing down. It would have the form of y hat is equal to some alpha zero plus x alpha one plus x squared alpha two, you know, plus it's expanded up to, up to some degree. Is there a better polynomial that fits through these data better? Okay, and, and so this is what we want to try and do. Um, and so it turns out if you fit a higher and higher degree polynomial, it's going to fit better and better. Um, right, so everyone understands the example, and then we'll, we'll switch, switch to, to Python. Great. So let's, uh, let's try and move this over and hopefully still, okay, still recording. Um, where is the other, other window I want? Good. Okay. Great. So, so, so hopefully you can now see the um, <laughs> you can now see this IPython notebook. Okay. So again, this is happening in this line here. This is this collab file, and the second one we're going to go through is is right here. Okay. Um, and so, okay. So we're going to import so NumPy. And we'll use this linear algebra package LA. And the first thing I've done is I've just loaded in exactly the same data I showed you on the slide just, just a second ago. Um, okay, so, so this is this multiple linear data where this is the time, this is, is, the, is the jiggle, and this is the scroll. Again, I encourage you to do this at the same time as me. And then this is the Y vector I printed out. And I, I, I've, I've ahead of time gone and loaded this one in this first column, just, just to skip doing that step. And then to define the coefficients, I'll just call these A, this would be a four dimensional vector where I just take X transpose dot product with X, right? And then I take the inverse. And, and this is a function you have to call that the, the, from the linear algebra package inverse. Um, and it's, we'll think of it as closed form, but we'll see you have to actually do work to actually compute it. Um, times, again, dot product with X transpose with, with Y, and it will get out these coefficients. As I said, you know, um, you get about $26 for every, um, just for coming on the site. You get about 42 cents for, um, for um, or point, right? or maybe it's less half a cent just for the time, the time didn't affect me. I think I mentioned that wrong because it's less than one per second. Um, and then you get more, um, you, you get about $12 or 12 cents per thing you scroll and you, and you, you get some, you might lose some money for, um, or for scrolling, but this is, is the jiggle, right? So this was the m amount of, Expect amount of money you got for the more time you spend jiggling, right? And you can also, there, there are some built-in ways how to do this. Um, this is one built into linear algebra. The, this one actually complains that I, I haven't set some parameter. Um, there's just, and you know, don't worry about that for this example. Okay, and so, and so I've, I've got this model. And so if, if I want to, here. So since this was confusing, let's try and get, let's see if I can get out. So um, X3, let's see if I can extract the third row here. And uh, what is this? So I want three comma, let's see if I can get this. Let's see if I got this right. Actually, I want this to be starts kind from zero. So let's see. This is this third row here. Third row was this one, right? This is the third row. Okay. And 
this is the third row. It starts kind of from zero, so index two. Okay, and if I want to predict the value here, the a dot product with x with x three, and the output is um, eight one nine three. So eighty one dollars is the prediction here, right? And the actual money was seventy six dollars. So that's not so bad actually. So I pre I predicted. $81 and the actual value was $76. Okay, so the model is what I get out. It's just this, the model is just gonna be this vector right here, these four numbers. And then to get it out, I just do this dot product with any of the data points. And the subtraction from the actual value with this would be the residual. Okay, let's quickly do the polynomial regression here. Um, and we'll probably, come back to this on, on, so on Wednesday, but we're going to start with some true fit here. So that I, I'm going to um, have some value. Um, so I'm going to subtract something off here and I'm, the true model will be this U value um, with some, I've subtracted something, I've added some offset coefficient four, coefficient 0 0.01 times squared and 0 0.009 times that to the third power, right? So I'll define this function. I'll use that just for plotting of what, that's, I use that to generate their original data. Um, okay, and that should be, I, I generate the original data from that with noise, I, that's not in this file. Okay, I define this polynomial fit where I, um, you know, plot some stuff. Oh yeah, no, this is so I can do plotting. And then I'm gonna, um, and I'll use this polyfit function that I had, I showcased before, but now I'm gonna increase this by some, some power P. Okay, and now with this data, this is all the data I just showed a little bit ago. And now I'm gonna run this with a polynomial fit of degree three. Okay, and I get this red curve that goes, goes through here. If I had instead used a polyfit of degree one, I get this line. If I do a degree two, it has to be a polynomial of degree two. You know, it turns out you can kind of see a little slope here, but it's not really fitting through here, right? It's kind of making kind of a parabola, but it doesn't fit the data that well. But when I do a three, I, it fits, fits pretty well, right? If I do a four, Maybe that fits better, and I can keep in increasing this. Eight. Now it's, this is an eight degree polynomial through the data, and you can see it's got lots of these wiggles through here. And if I set this large enough, I forget how many data points I have, like 18 data points. Okay, it's giving me some error, but it's basically gonna go through, it's almost gonna go through all of these, all these data points here. And if I set some tolerance high enough, it'll actually go through all, all of the data points. It's kind of, it's complained and we'll, we'll see for good reason. Um, so it won't actually go through it. Look, I set it to 100 and it actually managed to go through all the, all the data points here. Okay, um, so, okay, so we've, we've learned how to fit these complicated models on this data. Um, I feel like, you know, there was confusion. I went kind of quickly, but we'll have two more lectures on this topic. Um, but we'll discuss what's wrong with this on Wednesday. The main topic on Wednesday is overfitting and cross-validation. And this, the, the residual, the sum of squared errors on this model, the red one, is going to be smaller than if I use a degree three or, or a model of, of degree one but it's not necessarily going to be better, okay? And we, we don't, I haven't explained the tools yet of why it's not better, um, but that's what the focus on, on, on Wednesday will be. And then we'll have some slack, and I know there's some, some confusion, and we'll, we'll go over some of these things on the, the following lecture. Um, so, okay, great, so, so I'll, I'll stop there.